You'd think a guy that paints miniatures would have some degree of fine motor control, but apparently not. I have to say that you are taking the fact that you just got immediately dunked on <laughs> really well. But Scott's just uh, being a jerk face right now, and he's kicking you with his old man feet. Oh. This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Hi, my name is Scott the Miniature Maniac, and today is the inaugural episode of Kill Your Friends, a series wherein we celebrate the friendships that you cultivate through board games. And today, my friend here is John, and we're playing Guild Ball. Yeah, and I'm gonna crush your dreams. <laughs> okay. I guess technically John and I met on the internet. I was just getting into miniature painting, and I was watching a lot of videos on YouTube. And I came across his video where he was at a local gaming store. And I knew that store. So Scott was from Minnesota. So I just emailed him out of the blue like a creeper. The concept of stranger danger didn't outweigh that of, ooh, someone recognized me from my videos. So I was like, yeah, sure, let's hang out. <laughs> so that was it. That's the story. <laughs> we picked Guild Ball because personally, I freaking love the game. Every single step of it is like steeped in strategy and it's obvious, but not apparent about how you should take advantage of that strategy. I don't really like any of the miniatures in the game and I consider myself to be first and foremost a miniature painter and I'm still interested in playing the game. So I think that suggests something. Before we play the game though, let's discuss a little bit of the rules. This is Guild Ball. It's a two-player game wherein both players control a team of six miniatures. On your team, you have four regular players, referred to as squaddies, a mascot, and a captain. The objective of the game is to get 12 victory points before your opponent. There are two ways to get these victory points, either by scoring goals, which nets you four, no! or taking a player out, which gets you two. Here's what a typical turn looks like. Players alternate assigning influence to their team. Once influence has been assigned, each player alternates back and forth, activating each of their miniatures in a chess-like faction until every single character has gone. Influence is a kind of currency that you expend to do certain actions with your characters, like sprinting, kicking or passing the ball, using character plays, which are kind of like spells, and of course, murdering your opponent. Let's go through a passing and an attacking example right now. Let's say Skulk has the ball and he wants to pass it to Obulus. First, we need to look at Skulk's kick stat, which states that he is a 3-6. The distance value is how far he can pass the ball, meaning Obulus needs to be within six inches to even consider getting a pass, which he is. The other value of three refers to how many dice Skulk can roll when making this pass. In this case, three. With three dice, I need at least one four plus to nail my shot, and then Obulus gets the ball. Easy peasy. This is referred to as a TN test or target number test, the target number in this case being a four or higher. Various factors like intervening foes or being on fire can often make this pass harder or easier to accomplish. Now, on to murderizing your foes. Let's say Graves here wants to send Brisket to an early grave. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good one. To attack someone in Guild Ball, you need them to be in your melee range, which is stated on the front of your card. Once you're in range, you roll dice equal to your attack stat on your player's card. The value you're looking to roll higher than is your opponent's defense score, which in this case is a four plus. You roll your dice, find all your four plus results, and then remove a successful roll for each point of armor your opponent has, in this case, one. These are my net successes. Now, examine your player card playbook results. Each column of circle represents one success. Because I have three net successes, I can pick any one result in the first three columns. These symbols and letters represent all sorts of actions like damage, dodging, pushing, tackling the ball, and more. No one character has the same playbook. They all vary. That's enough rules chat for now. We'll look at further mechanics as we encounter them in game. Let's take a look at the teams that are struggling today for soccer superiority. I picked the Morticians because they're the closest thing to like an evil team in Guild Ball. 
Um, <laughs> that's pretty much it. There isn't like one particular character that kind of like sold it for me. Morticians are all about kind of being aware of your enemy's game plan and trying to mess with that. They're a hybrid team in the sense that they don't really excel at either killing people or scoring goals. They're kind of somewhere in the middle. Most games you might score two goals and get two kills and win that way. I picked the order because I was going to pick the Morticians, but Scott already had that team and they were mostly all painted and I wanted to play the dead people. So I decided to do the exact opposite. Um, the order have these two awesome looking characters that they look like holy knights and they're just so cool looking. So I'm like, I'm drawn to that. I'm going to pick that team. Come to find out they are the two crappiest characters on the team. So I didn't use them because I need to win. The Order have this fun combination and they get their own second ball of light. And I don't know a whole lot of the intricate strategy of this game yet, but I know enough strategy for me to be able to score on turn one. And that means I need to put a lot of influence on Brisket, do some weird dancing with the ball of light and the regular ball, and I can get her all the way down the pitch and to score on turn one. Today I want to thank two companies for providing items for this day's shoot. First one is the Mortician Pitch from Deep Cut Studios, and second is this lovely Paduke Dice Tray from Wormwood. If either of these items interest you guys, you can find them linked in the description below. Now me and John already set up this Guild Ball match where it's deployed, the terrain is down, and we've divvied up our game plan cards. And the first thing we do in a Guild Ball match, John, is... Kick off the ball? No, no, we shake. Come on. This is a friendly game, even Jeez. though we're friends. You gotta get that right. All right, all right. All right, so I've given Obulus, my captain, the ball, and I'll do a little kickoff. I gave the ball to Obulus because I want Obulus to be more forward and as part of the kickoff, you actually jog forward and this kind of puts him in a position of a little bit of increased power. So now that he's forward more, he's more of a threat to John. Now Scott, have you played many games of Guild Ball before? Hundreds. Literally hundreds. <laughs> I've played maybe 15 max games of Guild Ball. How many games have you played, John? Um. Last night, I think, was about my third, and I think only the first or second that I've finished. So what so, you're saying is I should win this game. Yeah, all the pressure is certainly on you. <laughs> I don't feel the pressure of winning when we were just playing for fun or when we played over Tabletop Simulator to just kind of learn it. But once the cameras are on, I need to win. So, yeah, there's pressure. All right. Albus has a kick stat of 2-6, so I'm going to see if this is successful. I need 1-4. It was. Okay, so let's see what direction this ball goes. It's going to the 2, and it's going 3 inches. I'm okay with that. I'll keep it. So you've kicked off the ball, and now we've got to assign influence. Yes. And I also get something special. Ooh. I get another ball. Ooh. I have two balls. <laughs> and you are a eunuch. <laughs> I'm going to give my ball of light, it is called, that the churchies use to my captain, brisket. The, the only thing with the ball of light is I can't actually score goals with it. Okay. So. Only for passing. It's only for passing. And if you get that ball, it does a bunch of damage to you. So yeah. don't touch my balls. I won't touch your balls. I don't want to. They're ugly and shrivelly. <laughs> Personally, never seen John's balls, but maybe in the future. <laughs> I wonder if one of John's balls is like just like a, a glowing orb of light. Well, on that note, let's hear a word from this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Mini painting is a confusing hobby to a lot of my relatives. And with an online gallery like the one that I made on Squarespace's platform, I'm able to very easily show my Aunt Gladys what it is I exactly do with these plastic toy soldiers. Personally, I'm all about finding the biggest bang for the littlest buck in the case of making videos. It's how I try to make the highest quality product with the lowest time invested. Squarespace gets you the highest quality website with the lowest time investment, leveraging their awesome templates. 
Maybe you don't need an online gallery, but you would rather prefer to write your battle reports on a slick website. Maybe those bat reps are restricted to paying audience members, which you can implement with Squarespace's members area. Whatever your idea, head to squarespace.com slash miniac to save 10% on your first purchase of a domain or website using the code miniac at checkout. All right, let's get back to slowly crushing John's will to live. I have to assign my influence. Yes. Oh, nice little fat stack on brisket. I wonder what you're gonna do. Seeing that giant stack of influence on brisket can only mean one thing, and that is John is going all in on getting a turn one goal, for sure. Are you, a, are you a try hard player in games like these? I think the operative term is casual try hard. Mm. You know, no one wants to lose to their friends. No. But I'm not going to win in a tournament. I'm not <laughs> going to win a single game. <laughs> All right, there's my influence allocated. Now you may start handling your balls. All right. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start off by uh, activating my captain, Brisket, with the ball of light first. So, Brisket, I'm going to start by spending one influence to have her pass the ball of light to her good buddy, Harry the Hat. Uh, she's got a kick stat of three. Uh, I have... Un... No, that was successful. Are you within tap-in range? What's tap-in? Four? Half of your kick distance. Her kick is eight inches. She's within four. So, yes. Okay, so then you get it on threes. Okay. So she passes him the ball. I gain a momentum for that successful pass. And Harry the Hat has a special ability of anybody within four inches of him that passes the ball, they get to immediately dodge four inches. And who never, whoever would have known that a hat could be just so inspiring. Yeah, it is an inspirational hat. All right. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use Brisket's character play called I'm Open. Okay. And it takes two influence. And a teammate can immediately pass her the ball. Okay. So Harry has got three dice on his kick. Um, I got it there. So he's gonna pass the ball back to her, get me another influence, puts me up to three. Okay. She will again make that four inch dodge. Okay. Three influence left. So uh, she's gonna pass the ball again. The question is, who does she pass it to? Give it to the lion. I've heard he's really good handling the ball. If my cat is in the indication, Great ball handler. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, yeah. So uh, she's gonna pass the ball, spending an influence, and she's gonna pass it to pass it to Mist. I almost want to see you fail one pass one time. Could you one time? No, not this time. All right. So I do that. I gain another influence. I'm up to f or momentum. I gain a momentum. There you I'm go. Up to four. You have to pretend that you know how to play this game, <laughs> right? I so that when you win, people aren't like, "Wow, Scott lost to an idiot." Yeah, I don't know any of the vernacular. <laughs> All right, so I get a four-inch dodge. I am going to do the first inch to snap the real balls the real ball. to me. And then the rest of the three inches there. Okay. All right, so now brisket. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my fancy eight-inch stick. Um, so you're lining up for a shot? I'm uh, Yeah, because she can shoot the ball eight inches, so I want to see how far I have to get for that. Okay. I'll move her up to there. And now to, to shoot a, a goal, it costs one influence and one MP. It does. So I'm going to spend my one influence. Something else I want to know is that you moved into Obulus's melee zone, and I have an option to use an ability called Unpredictable Movement, and I'm choosing not to use it. That's very unpredictable of you <laughs> to not be unpredictable. I, I, quite, quite. Does it make you predictable? I would say it's more of a reverse psychology thing, so yes. I am now, it's predictable movement. So you just wanted to announce it so you could announce that you're not going to do it? For the viewers at home. They're not going to care. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I go down to three momentum. I had four accumulated from all my sweet footy skills. Oh, they were sweet. <laughs> and uh, I am going to spend another momentum to do what's called bonus time. Ooh, uh, bonus time gets me an extra dice to roll in any kind of roll. And I want to make sure this... This kick goes in. Okay, so you are in Obvious's melee zone, so you are down one die from your dice pool. Oh. You back up to three. Okay. Because you're bonus timing. Uh, that's that's what I meant. That would be terrible if I just we just started and I just scored already. 
Yeah, no, I'd feel probably like, shit, that happened. Yeah, I mean, I'm one third of the way there. If I missed this first goal, my very minimal amount of strategy would have totally been foiled and I would have not known what to do. It would have been all just winging it at the, the rest of the game. Um, that's just not going to turn out well for me. All I need is one four. Watch me brick this. <laughs> And then I don't have a strategy, okay? You don't even well, need a four. You need a three. Oh, why? Because if you oh. actually knew your characters, oh, you'd right. know that Brisket has a character trait that allows her to score on one less TN. Oh. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. It's like he's a beginner or something. Like I know this game. <laughs> <laughs> We're just both hedging right now just in case we lose the game. <laughs> Let's cut this in of me saying, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> this is an honor. Oh. A one, a two, and a three. Oh. So that is the first goal. We call that first blood. All right. Boom. So after a player scores the goal, you have the option to run the length if you want. Uh, would you like to run the length with one MP that you bank from scoring the goal? Uh, absolutely. I'll immediately spend that, and I'm what's I'm gonna get out of dodge. Okay. Because you have all your dudes there that you are, are gonna in mess her up. Mort City right now. Yeah. Now that John scored, what I get to do is a goal kick, which I can place the ball within 10 inches of my goal and then scatter it. And I'm going to put it right behind my left flank over here. All right, direction to the four, six. Well, that isn't the greatest scatter for me. John, you want another, uh, want another goal? Don't mind if I do. Okay, there's the ball. Your first activation is done. Now it's my turn to activate the player, is it not? I, I have to say that you are taking the fact that you just got immediately dunked on <laughs> really well. You know, I'm used to it. <laughs> You're used to getting dunked on? Yeah. You're the dude in the 90s NBA posters that's just kind of fallen back? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, like, like LeBron's crotch is like in this dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so big on sports. <laughs> All right, I think Skulk's going to activate and he's going to go get the ball. If I leave it there, Miss is going to pick it up and score again. Um, and I can't have that happen. I'll let you have one goal, but not oh, any, not anymore. I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate that. It was nice of you. That was two inches of movement. The ball is going to snickety snap to me. I'm sprinting, so I have five more inches. I don't entirely know all of what John's team can do. I just assume that they can take the ball and pass it an infinite amount and just move as far as he needs to move. So I'm just grabbing the ball with Skulk and just moving towards terrain to make it even harder for him to get the ball off of me because I'm, I assume he can get to me and do it. And now I pass the turn back to you, my friend. Oh, geez. All right, so here is where my lack of strategy is going to start to show. You had strategy only for the first turn. Yeah, first activation, not even first turn. I got five other people to go, and I don't know what they're doing. You just gave them, you just gave them influence randomly. Yeah, yeah, that was really the strategy there. <laughs> um, I'm going to activate the lion. Ooh. Yes. Okay. You're going to do a fake turn. Psych. Wow, the strategy coming into play right now is absolutely hey. insane. <laughs> All right, turn done? My turn? Yeah. I'm gonna go off the playbook. What? I'm gonna activate Obulus, which may at first seem like it's on the playbook. Yes. But it's not. Is this like a predictable, unpredictable movement? Kind of. Oh my God. We, I think you and I play just enough to where I think I know what you're gonna do, only to be proven wrong. That is exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> like we played last night, and so now I thought I knew what he was gonna do, and I think he purposely played away last night to completely fuck with me so now I'm gonna get crushed. So in the beginning of turn, I did my shadow-like movement and now I'm going to jog to Ye here, which is in melee range of you. Sorry, in my melee range, but not in yours. And I'm oh. also within eight inches of mist. I'm gonna use a character play that I've never used before. Literally in the game of Guild Ball. I think I'm gonna use her unpredictable movement, sir. You can't. You can only use UM when I enter your melee zone. And your melee zone is one inch. So suck my tiny wiener. God. I'm going to cast Misdirection on Mist. So this is a two influence character play. I'm gonna bonus time it. Um, so I have one momentum from going seconds. So now I have three dice. Mist is a 5-0, so I need a five to get this Misdirection off. Normally what I would do with Obulus in this situation is Puppet Master Brisket toward me so that I can then kill her. 
But I feel like I need to secure John's second goal a little bit more and make it more harder. So we're gonna start out with uh, misdirection on mist. I'm assuming John gave him a specific amount of influence to do a set amount of tasks, and I kinda wanna just mess with that a little bit. Noonan! It doesn't go off, it was unsuccessful. Or not. <laughs> You know what feels better than rolling really, really well yourself? Your enemy rolling poorly? Yes. <laughs> your, your opponent rolling like garbage. Okay, now, with my remaining influence, I'm just gonna beat a brisket. You're gonna what? I'm gonna beat her. She's seasoned and smoked over 24 hours in a hickory. From my previous experience witnessing what Obulus is capable of, I feel that more than this being a, a bad turn for Obulus, it was a, a shot to the gut of Scott. And hopefully that it will bring him in a downward spiral that will continue the rest of the game. <laughs> I landed all four, all five, minus one. I think I'll knock Brisket down. That was a nice roll, not gonna lie. The uh, knockdown result is super helpful. So in the future, it's just gonna make her harder to move around. He's gonna need to dedicate resources to her to get her to stand up. Uh, maybe it'll make it easier to kill in the future for some of my other dudes. Last attack. Okay. Nothing. One hit, minus one for armor, nothing. All right, my friend, it is your turn. I am going to go with Mist Osabi, and he is gonna pass to Spigot. I've got a kick distance of eight inches on mist. So he's gonna, he's just gonna like boop. Yeah. Just a little boop. Uh, or he'll oh. fail. You know, John makes a lot of passes with his team. You know, he's bound to miss one at some point. And I'm glad that it happened in this game while we were filming. <laughs> do you know how to do this? I've never missed a pass. It is my pass. pleasure to show you how to do this because you've never missed a pass. Never missed a pass. Okay, so. <laughs> gonna give it to fangers fangers now what do you do you little you little ween he, he's gonna use his second influence to sprint I want to be within one inch so I get his bonuses for cover nice but as far away from your brosifs as possible your turn my friend In terms of turn one, I don't really think that is how I envisioned it going. Uh, typically, whoever scores the first goal, I think it's normally brisket. I'm able to kill that person, but in this case, I wasn't able to do that. So now we're in the end phase for turn one. All the players have activated and spent their influence. And what we're going to do is remove ongoing effects like ghostly visage. We're going to trigger uh, things like burning and poison, which there are none of. And we're going to go into initiative now for turn two. We also can't forget that we've got to take away any influence we didn't spend. Those go bye bye now. All right, going into turn two, this is probably as best case scenario as I can ask for. Scott has done next to nothing to my team. I've already scored once, and I've got mist set up where I can see the opportunity to get goal two. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I knew I knew you were gonna go low. Yeah. So I went low so I could get a. An extra thingy. Um, I am going to choose Mist. Okay. Mist has poised. All right. You're going first. You allocate influence first. How are you going to score this time, John? It's a simple game, really. I activate Spigot. I, I don't I don't have no confidence that I actually have the math to do this, but I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm sure it'll work out. You have enough movement to get anywhere you want. <laughs> yeah, I can't really do anything. I'm just kind of like sitting there and letting him pass the ball around and just move insanely. Like I just, I'm, I'm just witness to what's happening right now.
All right, since you moved out of uh, Graves' melee zone, I get a parting blow. Ho <laughs> ho, Johnny boy! You have made a grave mistake. <laughs> parting blows are at plus two attack. Graves has attack of five, so he's hitting with seven dice. All right, looking for threes, two armor. We have many successes, minus two, three net. With my three net hits, I'm gonna choose the result of a guild ball icon and a KD, but since this is a parting blow, I don't get the guild ball icon effect, I only get the knockdown. So I'm gonna place you just outside my melee zone and knock down. Here's probably my first real frustrating moment of the game, um, and it shows my lack of understanding of the rules, especially melee zones and where you should go or should not go. Every little inch of movement in this game can mean a big, big difference. Um, I'm super frustrated. I know his team is very controlly and they like to mess with you, knock you around, steal the ball, tie you up until somebody comes and shanks you in the back. And uh, yeah, this isn't a good time. What does it take for me to have him take his own knockdown off? Uh, well, you can forfeit your standard advantage you already use, so you can't do that. Or you can rest, which is one MP, and it takes the condition away. Sure, let's do that. I'm done. It was, it's so mentally taxing. This game is so mentally taxing. I had a headache after, like, turn one, and it just got worse. There isn't a way for me to engage Brisket while also not engaging Fangtooth while also not getting countercharged. So just outside of six inches for the counter charge, and I am I'm in Fangtooth's two inch melee zone. With my three influence, what I'll do is I'll just hit brisket a little time, just kind of smack it around. You know what I mean? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> well, I'll show you right now. <laughs> All right, Casket has attack of five. He's at minus one, so it gets four dice. She is a three one. What's up? Unpredictable. Oh. Um, would you like to UM? I feel like because you didn't know about the rule that I should make you pay. Not gonna lie, totally forgot that Brisket had unpredictable movement, which kind of leaves me with an awkward amount of influence. Luckily, Casket has some character plays that I can still use. With my three remaining influence, what I'll do is I'll cast Heavy Burden and I'll bonus time it and I will cast it on Brisket. And since she's knocked down, I need a three to get it off. And I got it off, so she is heavy burdened. What does that do? I don't know, just stuff, don't worry about it. <laughs> These are minor details. You don't worry about it until you try to do something and then I'll tell you what it does. <laughs> after you've taken your fingers off the mini. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, once again, ghostly visage. Quit putting those ugly circles on the table. I know, it's a real pain in the ass to deal with. Ish. Right there, ghostly visage down, that uses his other influence, and he just doesn't have anything else you can do with the other one. And Casket is, unfortunately, more, more, mostly my fault, not doing a whole lot right now. Fangtooth, I activate. He uses Ground Pound, which I can do for all three of his influence. Ground Pound! Every enemy unit within two inches of him is gonna take two damage, Gonna get knocked down and is gonna get pushed directly away from me two inches. So I hit four of six. They call that a Yahtzee. Yahtzee! <laughs> <laughs> Don't spill on the, the Paduk dice tray! <laughs> <laughs> I think at some point I wanted to farm Fangtooth for momentum, which is why I was like positioning people around him, but clearly I didn't do that. And then came the ground pound. Okay, my turn to activate a player, right? It is your turn. Okay, I'm just going to jog in a base to base and I'm gonna hit you one time or at least one time right now um, Grace has attack of five and you are a three two All right, so with my first attack with Grace, I got uh, One net hit and with that I'll do one damage and we'll do one more attack That's what daddy wants all right four hits minus two for two net hits. I'm going to knock you down and strip away one armor from you with they ain't tough. I like to beat mist. Okay. Um, mist is within one inch of that, cover, so he gets cover of darkness plus two to jog or advance. So I'm just gonna do a jog, which is regularly six inch jog, so this goes up to an eight inch jog. I will attack. I'm gonna counter attack. Bolt free. 
So it's minus one because I have one armor. So one success. I got a momentum tackle on one. Okay, so now I'm going to counterattack. So I get the ball? You get the ball. All right, here's what it is. If I don't get at least two fives with seven dice, he is going to score again, making the score eight to zero oh in turn two, which is not at all what I want. Skulk has six attack plus one because Grace is hanging around. You're a five zero. Oh. All right, I got two successes, so I'll tackle the ball back. Dice cards be praised. Oh. Really? All right, frustration levels are mounting here in this exchange was one of those times where I realized his dudes are just better at certain things than mine, and that would be kicking you in the kneecaps and knocking you over so you can't score, even though you're right next to the goal and you have the ball, just kick it, dude. <sighs> here's, the, here's the silver lining. I can't tackle, I can't counterattack again. I can only do it one time. So you could take the ball. Yeah, but I can't score. <laughs> oh, you see what this is, John? This is the world's smallest violin. Uh, all right, so he's going to do this. He's going to attack again. Yeah, we'll do momentous tackle. Ball's yours. Uh, and then my last point, I'm going to use acrobatic for a two-inch dodge. It's possible that you left my melee zone and you... You did. So I'm going to use uh, Skulk's ability called lightning reflexes and jog toward you. All right, here's what daddy's going to do. I'm daddy, in case you didn't oh, know. Oh, in this situation, yeah, you're yeah, daddy? Yeah, yeah. What you're Even though do. you're like 47? <laughs> what are you? <laughs> yeah, 47. Okay. <laughs> right on. is gonna go. She's just gonna jog in. Now she's gonna hit this guy one time. And she has attack of five, and we're at plus two because of Graves and Skulk. So five, seven. And he's knocked down, and he's at minus one armor, so he is a two one. Looking for twos. Every single one hits, minus one. That's six successes. One, two, three, four, five. That's a wrap. So we'll do four damage, which becomes five, and then one, which becomes two, for a total of seven damage. One more time. Every single one hit. So minus one, so that's six. We're gonna do the same thing again, seven. Actually, how much health does he have left? Six health. Um, I'm gonna do three momentous, which becomes four, and then one, which becomes two, which kills him, right? Yep. Boom, spigot, get housed. <laughs> this stupid wench. You know, sometimes you just gotta put a fool in his place. And this time it was Spigot. Sorry, not sorry. Cloak of Rats, would you like to take three damage with Miss or become snared? I'll take three damage. Okay. that, we end the activation phase for turn two. So the last thing we need to do is remove all of the ongoing effects and unspent influence and mess up the position of the characters. Yes, make sure we do that in my favor. <laughs> <laughs> Not all in yours. Right. And now we move into initiative for turn three. Okay, the game plan going into turn three, the pitch is fully accessible. I can murderize some people, hopefully. But also, Oblis is kind of sitting in the back of the pitch. Maybe I can get him the ball and he can score. We'll see. All right, well, we're back for round three after a uh, small little breaky break. I started really hot in the start of the game in round two. I hit an all-time low. 
So I am coming back hard. You went in the locker room, you got amped up, and now you're ready to fight. Yeah, you're ready, I, you're ready I head to bring the, the lockers. Heat. Yes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so top of uh, round three, we, we gotta pick a card. I already have mine picked. Got mine picked as well. Uh, three, two, one. Shmanka. Okay. Okay, I picked midfield general. Puts me at nine for the turn, and also everyone on my team is plus one, plus one for the turn. Vert? Wow, Movement. that's pretty cool. That's yeah, yeah. a good one. Yeah, I have back in the game because uh, I knew I was going to lose this uh, roll. <laughs> right, because you had six, I had one. I wasn't going to over overextend and try to get it. So I'm going to do that. I get one momentum because I'm going second. Or you get to pick, right? Or you I get just... to pick, right, and I'm going to go first. Are you sure? I am very sure because Mist is very upset that I stole the ball from him two times, and I do not want to give him a third opportunity. All right, so Spigot got knocked out last round, but he's not out for the whole game. In Guild Ball, he gets to come back next turn, which is what he's doing. So I got to start him right here. And then I get a free Joggy Jog back towards the action. So he's going to run over here. He predicts there's some shenanigans that might be happening with Obulus. So he wants to check out what's going on. Mine is really poorly uh, distributed, I'm sure. However, <laughs> it is done. All right, so come with me for the first activation, and I'll start with Skulk. Yep, I'm sure you will. Uh, so Skulk's going to do a jock. He's not in the melee range of mist, so he's not going to take a parting blow. And he's going to spend his one influence to pass the ball to Obulus. He has a kick stat of 3-6. Looking for a 4. I got it. I'm not going to bank it. I'm going to take it immediately and do a teamwork play, uh, which allows me to dodge four inches. That opening activation with Skulk getting Obulus the ball is actually a lot more threatening to John. He has to deal with this problem right now or Obulus will score immediately. So now John's kind of on the back foot. So now while he's dealing with Obulus, who's kind of notoriously hard to deal with, I can deal with the rest of his team, maybe getting a kill or even two. Will you permit me to move Skulk one more inch? Sure. Okay. I forgot about midfield general. Unless I lose this game. And then I disallow it. Um, I want the ball. <laughs> That's the end of that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I want the ball. Mist is so far away, and he's good at getting the ball. Actually, Brisket is too, but you're just going to derp on me. Um, so Fangtooth will charge. His charge is seven inches. Okay. Um... I am going to unpredictable move, but I will remain in your melee zone. Is the lion's melee zone one inch? Yes. Okay. So that was a charge, right? Yep. So he's regularly five dice. You get another four for charging. All right. Big money. Not bad. So three nets, probably not going to do anything. Um, knock down, double push. That sounds like it's going to do something. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so when you knock down a player with the ball, fun shenanigans happen. What? I didn't know this. This is exciting. So uh, the active player, which right now is you, we take the circular template and we point the one toward your goal. Roll for direction and distance. That's where the ball goes. So since the ball skated right there, John, you can choose with Fangtooth to have the ball snap to you. Mm, I wish I would have put a bunch of influence on risk it <laughs> i'm gonna have it snap to him i have no idea if this is the right move or not all right i assume when obulus is deep in my goal area that he this was his plan all along so for me to be able to take the ball from him and kick it away it felt really good like he's a controlling people uh i took it from him that feels great i will pass it to risk it all right did not get it failure but i screwed up Screw it up! Your turn. So here's my problem. I need to prevent Brisket from taking the ball from my rats, right? 
Danger, Will Robinson. John's fasty, shooty girl is near my pile of rats, and they're not really good at holding on to the ball, so she's probably going to get it. And this may turn into a goal. So I could probably deal with this problem right now, or I could probably house someone else with Pelage. I kind of want to house somebody else. <laughs> Seems like in this game, you have to have walked this fine line of you need planning out your strategy multiple moves ahead, but be flexible enough in understanding what your, your characters can do to change that on the fly as your opponent interacts. And that's pretty cool. Uh, it requires more brain power, but it makes the game much more strategic and less reliant on dice rolls than almost probably any other miniatures game I, I can recall having played. Not that dice don't factor in, but... Not sure about this, but I'm gonna activate a Pelage, and I'm just gonna scooch in the fire to be actually base to base with him. All right, got four influence, swinging away. Got one hit. We'll do two damage, non momentous. Ooh. That's not what I wanted to see. That is none. That's better. Three. <laughs> He's a goner. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't really think about that until he's dead. That is like losing a third of your turn. That's not good for games. All right, I'm gonna activate Brisket. So she's just gonna do a regular move here. Okay. And she's gonna attack the rat. Okay. Uh, 4 0. -oh. So this was a one. Yeah. So three net hits. I will do a momentous tackle dodge. And then I'm gonna have her pass the ball of light to Harry. Okay. So she's at minus one for her pool right now because she's engaging Vile Swarm. Hit it. Nice. There, one momentum. Banking it. Get to three. I say go, sir. Okay, um, Graves is gonna go and he is going to just walk up and go base to base with Harry. Graves has attack of five and he's at minus one because uh, Harry's right next to that obstacle. He's looking for... Whoa, wow. Oof Three ones and a six. Here we go. So no uh, no hits on that one. I like those dice. I don't like those dice. They're even more Titian dice. What the frick? All right, next attack. Bonus time this time. Hey, that's a lot better. All right, we got four hits minus one for armor. So three net hits. And we are going to knock you down and apply they ain't tough. Uh, the ball doesn't the ball go somewhere? It does. Oh, I forgot you had the ball light. Hey, I rolled the dice. You put out the. So thing. I'm the active player. Roll the die. Direction. Deuce. Going to the two. We're going to one, one inch. inch. Okay, it's literally on top of me. You want it? Graves, how you doing? You you hurting? You hurting? You're not hurting. Yeah, I'll take it. Four damage. Boom. Word of God. In the form of a football. <laughs> I'm just stripping away his mobile faculties, one cheesy thing at a time. Mmm, tastes like mozzarella. You're going for the old man? He's already used UM. Mm-hmm. Are you charging me? Yes, I am. Aww. Because you were knocked down, and you know what Spigot's do good at doing? Yeah, dude, old man winner here is going down. Right now, I'm going to brass knuckle his dome into the turf. I'm going to deep stance. Defensive stance while you're laying on the ground. So the logistics of defending yourself while you're lying down. You know, Albus is kind of on the ground. He's like, oh, please, no. You know, it works. It works. I mean, it's obviously he's like trying to curl up in a ball to protect his face. But that just means I can keep punching you in the spleen until you internally bleed out. This is some BS. So he's regularly five tech. Plus four for charging. Plus two. Plus two for his bros. Don't I, even have enough dice. I don't have enough dice. I need another, I need one of your black sheep dice. I don't think I even have anything that's super cool. Oh wait, sorry, I need two more dice. He gets another two for enemies that suffer the knockdown condition. Floored. That's a trait? That's a, tra that's a character trait. Keep them coming. Let's go. Woo! Let's find some more dice. That's a lot Let's of dice there. Um, Let's do this. I don't think this is probably going to even be a, a, a like a useful thing to do, but I could not do it. It must feel good to have all those. Uh, I've made four. You see, four one. Four, four one now. Yeah. Right, these are fifty fifties. Fifty fifties. All right. 
that I did not get 50-50 for the umpteenth time this game. Oh. I'm not hitting my 50-50s no. at all. Five out of 13 is definitely a bad roll, but it's not bad enough to like rage about like audibly. So I imagine John is just kind of like silently raging to himself right now, which brings me joy. <laughs> ah! It's fucking game, dude. I'm gonna melt my dice. I'm just gonna do two momentous damage. Okay. Okay. Take it, stupid. Dice back, a roll once for me. Ah. Oh. So now we're entering the end phase for turn three. Uh, we have to remove ongoing effects and influence that wasn't used, uh, and also trigger conditions like burning and bleed and poison. And it so happens that Pelage is on fire, so she takes one damage during this end phase for it, and the Molotov goes away. So she still stays on fire. Correct. Yes. Okay, then. All right, so now we do initiative for turn four. All right, going into turn four, I feel like John is looking for an opportunity to score. And as long as I don't give him that opportunity, I should be able to win this game. But obviously this is a dice game, all kinds of crazy things happen. But that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. All right, flip your card over for round four. Here's where we're at. I got wingy bingies. All right, I did plus six. I'm at seven, you are at nine. So which one of my characters would you like to single out? I choose Graves. Okay, I choose Harry the Hat. All right, here's where my inexperience with this team is starting to show. When I don't have the ball, I don't know how to effectively get it. I feel like I've got the tools to do it and I don't quite understand how to get in, get the ball, pass it to somebody else and get a score. If I start with the ball, I'm fine. If I don't have it, like, I just kind of feel like a chicken, my head cut off, running around the pitch, being like, ah, give me the ball. Give me the ball. I'm going first. You are indeed going first. I activate brisket. Well, I didn't know what to do from here, but. Well, I declare. <laughs> There's been a murder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to attack the rat. Whoa. That's a lot of hit. Every single thing hit. I will do, oh, I can do a two, da two momentous damage and a two inch, or a double dodge, sorry. Or I can do momentous damage and give myself with a plum. This gives me an extra victory point if I score. That'll make, that'll make me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> two momentous damage and a two inch double dodge. You gonna hit old man Obulus right now? I, I am, um, I wanted to get out from under the rat. But okay, uh, that didn't happen. I'm gonna counter attack. Okay, two, one net, one damage and a one inch dodge. Here's my counter attack. Whoa! Look at that roll. Hey, so that in the camera. Hey, one hit, minus one armor, nothing. All right, I just I gotta got get the ball, so I will use another one. All right, here we go. Thanks. Oh. Whew. Okay, so this is momentous tackle with a one inch dodge. Very nice. I'll pass it to him. Three. Dice, yeah, that's successful. She is within four inches of the hat to get a free four inch dodge. Okay. All right, so, and, so he's usually two. I'm going to bonus time this pass. Okay. I need fours, a one four. Got it. We got it. That pass goes there. I get a momentum. She gets a free four inch dodge. Friggin' A, dude. That stupid, inspiring hat. Has a hat ever inspired you to do anything other than have a warm head? I gotta get within four inches for the tap in. Going for that goal? Yeah. No. I'm not gonna try to shoot a goal right now, <laughs> Scott. 
I'm just gonna hang out by the cemetery over here. This is a really small cemetery though. <laughs> just just one, one person. And he's kind of coming back to life. So all yeah, right. So well, there's kind of a few guys in there coming. All right. To so life. I'm gonna get within half distance for. The- I just can't roll triple once. We're good. Very nice. Bing. Dude, I need a uh, Zuzu Buela. What are they called? The bah, 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 that they play when you score in soccer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I'm feeling. This is over. All but the crying. Give me the trophy. Yatch. I feel like every single player on your team can receive the ball and then pass it back to the pass it back the ball. Why is that? Because I'm good. Because <laughs> you're a cheater. <laughs> it feels so bad. I'm sure when I do it. But to me, it's so frustrating that it's it's like I, I can't do it as often as I want to, which yeah. is probably, I think they call that balance. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're going there. I don't know if this is the right play. Last time I put the ball in the open, you ran away with it and scored. Direction, three, six inches. Not bad. Your activation, sir. It's two goals. Two goals. All right. Not going to get skunked here. You kicked the ball. In a random direction, it happens to go to the one dude who's wide open way on my side of the pitch. That's convenient. It's definitely nice that Opulus got the ball after the goal kick, but I can't just score immediately. In Guild Ball, when you score, the opponent gets the ball. And with a team like The Order, I feel like if I give him the ball and I'm not like winning off of that goal, he's just gonna give it to someone who's gonna score right away. And in this current position that I'm in, I'll lose immediately. So I kinda need to hold on to the ball just mess with it, and then score when I'm going to win. Now you're in danger of one screw up and you lose the game. I'm gonna activate casket. I'm gonna use my legendary on casket, casket time. Most squaddies don't have legendary plays, but most squaddies aren't casket. I've been softening up Harry for a little bit. Time to get in the casket, boy! For this attack, a casket has a attack of five. He's at plus two for single doubt and plus one for grace, but minus one for the big boy. 2 0. We'll do two momentous damage and then one normal damage. He's in my casket. That's plus four VP. Boom! Get in my casket! <laughs> the inside of casket's casket smells like beef and cheese. <laughs> That's two bonus victory points, tying it up at 8-8. Eight, eight. I'm not sure if this is the greatest idea. Okay, he has five tack, he's at minus one, plus one because of uh, Graves. He's gonna hit and miss. Uh, do I wanna hit this guy? Why not? I regret this life choice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Harry's kind of a big guy. He's probably in that casket, making it hard for casket to do anything. It's okay, he already did his job. We'll, we'll give him a pass. Okay, uh, I'm gonna hit again, but I'm gonna hit this guy. He's a 2-2. I have five attack now. I'm at plus one, minus one for mist. All hit, minus one for, minus two for armor. Three net, we'll do two momentous damage. Oh, and he ignores the effect of that because of resilience, doesn't he? Yes. So I don't get the momentum. I stay at five. Man, this is the fucking worst idea I've ever had. <laughs> Let me just go hit miss, do nothing, hit this guy, get a resilience, and waste two influence. <laughs> I'm going to hit him again. <laughs> I got to make something happen here. All right, all hit, minus two, three net. We'll do two momentous damage this time for real this time. For real.
All right. And now we're in the end phase of turn four. Pelage takes the damage from fire. Single doubts go away. And we do initiative for turn five. I'm busting out my highest value card here to hopefully see if I can go first. Okay, so for our initiative, you put down C's initiative. So you win by one with 13 to my 12. Of course, C's the initiative. All right, I didn't take into consideration that he could kill somebody, get eight to eight, and then he would score and win the game. So I need to play the C's the initiative card because I need to dictate the order. I need to get that ball from that stinky old man. Ah! And since you have the initiative, you get to pick a player to dodge four inches. So which one would you like to dodge four inches? Um, Something like that? Yes. Okay. I'll pick Obulus to dodge. And we'll just go like two inches this way and two inches that <laughs> way. Get your dang cards out of the way. Oh! Uh. So here we are at the start of round five, Last round and five. it is a, it's a close game. It's eight to eight. It's eight to eight right now. It's really close. Um, Abbas got the ball in the end zone. You just gotta like think it's coming for him hard. Just, just tap it in. Yeah, just tap it gingerly. in gingerly. All right, Spigot, let's brass knuckles his face in. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, just, just walk up. Like, hey, what's up? You're gonna use your standard advance with Spigot. Yep. Okay. I'm just going to walk up and be like, oh, hey, what's up? Unpredictably move. What? Whoa. I didn't see that coming at all. Slippery old man is slippery. Riding the fucking edge like a dirty old man. All right. Now what? Oh, did you screw up the measuring? No, you didn't. Ah, that was all I had. That was literally all I could do. All right. I'm still within two inches of that boy. So I'm going to hit him. All right, go. You're a 3-2? Do it. Finish me. 3-2? Fucking Sudoku me, all right? <laughs> Sudoku? Are you a 3-2? I don't... Yes. All right. A lot of ones. Uh, two hits, but minus two armor is nothing. That's I nice. like that. I like that. Nothing. Oh, I don't have any momentum to counter -jack. That's three hits minus two, so a net hit. That's one momentous dodge. Two net hits. That's another momentous dodge. This is the fourth influence. <sighs> nothing. Next one. Fifth. Nothing. Okay. Sixth. All right, one more bonus dodge. All right, one more attack. I will bonus time shoot the ball into attack. the goal. Well, you can do one more attack. Nope. I got one shot to make, and then the game is over. I got three dice, and just one of those dice needs to be a three. You can do one more attack, though. Need threes. Oh! Whoa! 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 I saw all little dice. Oh. I saw. Oh, God little game. numbers. Oh, man. Oh, that right. A... Flip it. All right. A little too close for comfort, but you got the job done. Well, at the end of the day, I'm happy that I didn't embarrass myself because that was entirely likely. I got my first score in, right? That was my victory. Like, I just dunked on him to start the game. That was a super fun game of Guild Ball, not gonna lie. None of our practice games went anything like that. A score of 12 to eight is like a super competitive score. It was like really back and forth. There were a lot of moments where just single dice rolls could have just changed the whole direction of the game. So yeah, it was a lot of fun to have John over and play that game. All right, this game is fun. Um, it sucks because I lost, so this game sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to do it for episode, what are we calling it, zero or one? One. <laughs> That's going to do it for episode one of Kill Your Friends, the Guild Ball Edition with my friend, John. John, thanks for being here. I, I wish I could say that I was happy to have gone through this. <laughs> I vow that this will be the first and last time I lose a game of Guild Ball. <clears throat> you know, playing games with painted minis? I'm having fucking burp problems right now, dude. <laughs> All right, if you guys enjoyed this game, let us know in the comment section below and let us know what game you want us to play next. I'll bring in another friend because clearly this man can't take the fucking heat. Wow. That's all for now. More importantly than anything though, don't forget to... One second. Thank you for watching the pod episode of Kill Your Friends. Now this video is super long, so I don't want to take up any more of your time, but I want to talk about the future of this series. First of all, thank you to Alex for manning the cameras, Ryan for making sure we got the rules right, Josh for monitoring the audio, and to John for playing with me. A lot of things could have gone wrong if they weren't here. 
Kill Your Friends was a Patreon goal that I set for myself in December 2017, over three years ago. The series was inspired by Tabletop and Spell Slingers, two great shows on the YouTube channel Geek and Sundry. I underestimated the amount of time it would require from building a table to painting my team, making the terrain, getting John familiar with the game, shooting and editing the video, etc. Suffice it to say, it's a lot of work. I spent around 80 hours just editing the video, and that's time that I don't really mind spending, but I can't really spend on a dedicated ongoing series on my channel, realistically. But I have a plan. For a production like I want this to be, typically they do everything in big batches. They plan everything, shoot everything, edit everything, all in one big chunk of time. So I want to do exactly that. I'll pick the games, I'll invite friends over for one and a half day increments, I'll rent a space, hire a crew, rent equipment, and give all the footage to an editor to just do it all in one go. Unfortunately, that can cost a lot of money, and an obvious answer here might be crowdfunding, but before I went and just launched a campaign, I wanted to ask you guys, is that something that you're interested in funding? Season one of Kill Your Friends? If so, what kind of rewards do you want to see? Is there an option other than crowdfunding that I'm just not seeing here? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, let's end this video. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to... Hey, my man!